Hi, this is John with CNS Machine Tools. Just going to give you a quick demo and tour of the Iger software, the cloud based software that powers the Mark Forge, Mark I, and Mark II 3D printers. So, when you get into Iger, the first thing you'll see is your library it has a full range of um, parts there that you can see over here on the side. You can filter by any tags that you've used in the descriptions of your parts, and it'll show you those parts that are tagged. Up here, we have a tutorial that shows you some basic features, basically things that we'll be going through today. It shows you over here what's in your print queue, your list of available printers, a way that you can upload, um, I'm sorry, import an STL, clicking on that. Any alerts that you would have about print pauses or prints that had finished, anything like that over here. Settings, support, about the uh, Iger software, terms of service, things of that nature. So if you want to import an STL off your desktop, you'll click on that. It will give you the prompt to import that. Otherwise, if you want to start working with, <clears throat> excuse me, if you want to start working with a part that you already have in your library, you can um, hover over it and it'll show you you can delete that, which has, um, it gives you two options so you don't easily delete something. And over here, you can clone a part if you want to work with it and do something different with it. So that's what I'll do so we can see this part. Once you click on that, you come into the regular part view. Obviously, left clicking, you can spin the part around, look above it, look below it, whatnot. Over here, it gives you the dimensions of the part, the estimated print time, and the amount of material that it will take to print that part. Over here, you have the name of the part, the printer version. This lets you select between the Mark I and the Mark II, depending on the printer that you have. You can obviously scale the part up and down, putting the different values in there. And you can also rotate the part however you want to rotate it, whatever you want to do with it to get it to where you want it to print. Now obviously there's optimum ways to print a part based on that, but that's a little bit more in depth than we're going to do in this demo and trial today. Again, if you want to clone the part from here, if you want to update your STL, if you want to download it once you've got it where you want it, you can do that there. Support obviously here will start a support ticket for any problems you might be having with that part. So. Under here, if we wanted to use fiber, if we want to put fiber into this part, you just click on that and it'll bring up your fiber options. Kevlar, fiberglass, carbon fiber. We'll let you select what fill type you want for that fiber, the amount of fiber layers, the concentric fiber rings, and we'll go into all of that in a minute. Advanced settings, supports. There's overhanging material you want to put supports on unless your part is specifically designed to print. Otherwise, this lets you select the support angle doing this sometimes can cut down a little bit of print time or material time. Thin features, this is something that will make sure that you preserve any thin features of the part, but it may affect the dimensional accuracy. Using a brim, that's basically going to print a border around the part that will help adhere the nylon to the print bed in the interest of trying to prevent any type of warping you would get, and that's particularly useful if you're printing full fill. Layer height is not changeable if you're using fiber. Fill pattern is triangular. Give you an explanation, rectangular fill, triangular fill, hexagonal fill, just click on that arrow there. You can select your fill density, the number of roof and floor layers that you want, how many wall layers you want. If you want to put a description, that's where you'd put your um, description of the part. And if you wanted to tag it under anything, you could do that there. So we'll go ahead and save this clone. And then we'll do all of our slicing and calculating and pathing. And then we can go inside and take a look at the internal view. Now, as you can see, the white is going to be the nylon and the blue is the carbon fiber that we've layered there. When you lay fiber in a part in Iger, it will automatically default to the bottom and the top. It's going to throw those defaults on the bottom and the top. That's because that sandwich panel I-beam construction is where the strength in this print and the Mark Forge printed parts comes from. And you can see here it's also going to show us the brim around the part. Now similar to where we had on the part view, part stats are over here, the time, the amount of materials that you can expect. Up here, again, if you want to clone the part, get support, you can click those there. Visibility, that's going to allow us to select what all we want to see. So if we wanted to see where our fiber fill is, we can select that. If we want to see our plastic fill, we want to see our floors, our roofs, our walls, the brim, or if we want to see everything, we can select on that there. Now, going to the 2D view, it's going to let us see the part basically what the pass of nylon and fiber will be per layer.
And so we can just go through that and just scroll through there. Now, if we wanted to make some additions to our part, for example, if we wanted to add in here another, another section of fiber, what we basically would do is go here, select the layers that we wanted to add, and then we could come up here and either change the fill type or we could change the use fiber, and we'll tell it how much fiber we want to do. And we'll apply our changes, and you can see it filled our fiber in right there. So selecting down here lets you take a look at the layers that you're doing. So we've selected that. Now, if we want to make some other changes, we could come up here and say if we only want if we want less of the fiber, we can go in there and select less of the fiber. And you can go up and down and change the layers that you want in there. And basically, the we can only lay um, sorry we can only change it so minimally because the minimum amount of fiber required. We're doing this as a Mark One, so we have to make sure that we keep the minimum amount of fiber in there. But you could lay a little bit extra in there if you wanted to. And you can play with that. And if you want to just add the maximum amount of fiber it can fill, you just put the number, um, you know, in around 100 or 1,000. Or it will basically, if you put that number high up there like that, it will put in the maximum amount of fiber that it can do. Now, if you're having problems laying fiber in here, you can play with the rotation percent that may, um, that rotation may let some more fiber go in there if it wouldn't. So you can play with that and take a look at that. So we'll go ahead and save this. So it's going to save our model. And we can click off visibility. And then we can go in here again to the 2D view and see what exactly each layer is going to look like. Now, if we had something in here where we wanted to overprint a part, if we wanted to over basically put something in a cavity that we had designed in our part, what you can do is you can select to pause after that layer. And what it'll do is once it finishes printing that layer, it'll send you an email to let you know that the print is paused and you can go in there and put whatever insert you have into your part. So that's very, very handy. So you can change anything over here, change the name, change your printer version, scale it, rotate it, choose whether or not to use fiber, all those types of things. So as you can see, working with this software is very easy. It's very user friendly. Even if you don't have a whole lot of experience with 3D modeling or 3D printing, it makes it very, very easy. And of course, if you ever need to at any point in time, you can get support through Iger, or you can obviously email support, and then we'll get in touch with you and help you through your issue. So if you have any questions or any comments, anything you'd like to know that we didn't cover in this video, put a link to our email in the description. And there you go. Thanks for watching.